Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I'm working on the planer restoration again today, and uh, we got a little project, a little repair we've got to do for a part here that unfortunately damaged while we were taking this thing apart. So the casting that you see up here on the counter or on the, on the workbench is the cross beam that goes across the two uprights. It moves up and down, and on this is another piece that moves side to side, and that's where the clapper box is mounted on this metal planer. And uh, let me zoom you in here and kind of show you what we got to deal with and uh, come up with a game plan on how we're gonna fix it. Well, on the back side of this, there's these little tabs here and inside of this fits this piece here that is, has the screw that goes in it that raises and lowers the whole piece. And unfortunately, when we're taking this apart, uh, we broke one of the ears off and I uh, want to get that fixed. So this is actually on the top side of this piece. So as you're raising this piece up, this piece is moving up and a lot of the, the pressure is pushing on this and that's what's moving it up. And uh, we just, when we were taking this apart, we had an accident and that piece broke off of it. So today's task is to put it back on. Now my game plan for this, I think, I think I'm, I'm going to do a combination of two things. First off is uh, we're going to braise it back in place on three sides. I'm not going to put any braise on this inside joint because I don't want to have to get in here and, and grind, mill, whatever. I really don't have a machine that I'm comfortable putting this piece on to have to mill that back out. So I'm just going to not put any braise in here, just braise it on three sides. But then when I'm done, I think I'm going to take this over to the uh, radial drill. We're going to drill and tap a couple of holes in here where I can put some screws through this that will give it additional strength. The screws will go down into the casting and that will hopefully, between the braise and the screws, I think we'll be probably doing overkill. And you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So we're gonna make sure it's right. That's the game plan. I think what I'm gonna do is we'll start out. I'm just gonna clean these castings up along the brake, put some bevels in here to give room for our braise to go and get this set up start putting some heat in it and we'll brace it back together let's do it so looking here i've shown you the setup we've got where the i put the piece that fits into this slot in there and actually put a little shim up underneath the bottom there's a four thousandths thick shim in there so that when we unclamp this that part will come in and out uh, without any problem have enough clearance in there and we just use a set of ice grips and uh, clamped it all in place get it firmly where it needs to be for brazing and you can see i, I beveled out all the way around uh, that piece of metal there, you can look at it from a different angle here. And that just gives an uh, area for that braze to go down in there. You want to make sure it's very clean and you really want to have a nice V'd out area uh, for that braze to go down into. Uh, coming in here now, i got a rosebud tip on my torch and we are just putting heat in here. And the first probably 10 or 15 minutes, all I'm doing is just soaking heat into this part. And you can see now we're starting to get a little bit of cherry red on there. You really can't see directly under the flame very well, but trust me, it's cherry red as well. Uh, the way this uh, camera adjusts for the bright light, it really makes the flame look different uh, on camera than what it's actually looking like in person. I know a lot of people always say I don't have my, my flame set right, but it has more to do with the camera uh, adjusting for all that brightness in there. Just trust me, uh, we got it set right. But as we're going across here, you see I'm starting to lay some braise in there. I'm using a flux brazing rod. It's a pre-flux. And uh, we're just letting it go through here and melting that metal down in there. Now, one little trick when you're brazing, I really don't like to just put the torch right onto the brazing rod. You notice I'm, I'm soaking the, the torch into the metal. Uh, yeah, we got a little bit kind of coming over on the side, but uh, you really want the metal to be hot enough to, to melt that brazing rod down in there and not just hit it with a torch and melt it in there. If you, if you hit it directly with a torch, a lot of times it will, it, it, you, you don't get a good fusion to your metal like you do if you let your metal actually melt the rod in place. It's a little bit tricky on this part because I'm in tight quarters, but that's kind of what I'm aiming for. And we're just working our way across the top of this weld and making sure we get that metal to flow in as we go. Now I am stopping periodically. It's taking me some time again to get the heat just right. Uh, so I'll stop and, and heat it up and then braise a little bit, stop, heat it up, braise a little bit. When I get down here to the very end though, I am having to kind of come on the side and braise uphill. That's a little bit trickier than brazing across the top, 
but uh, I had already brazed the other side off camera, but we're just going up through there and getting all that brazing there. I took this off, it's cooled down now, at least enough that I can work with it. I went ahead and just took my angle grinder and just kind of dressed that up a little bit. Didn't really take much off of it, just made it look a little bit better so that when we paint it, it won't look bad. And we got a nice braze joint all the way around it. Now, well, I say all the way, three sides. This side here is still open. And you know that's a little bit concerning because that's really where most of the force is gonna be when it pushes on this top side, pulling up on it. So to kind of counter for that uh, as added uh, security, I'm gonna drill and tap a couple of holes we're going to put a couple of screws in the top there, and that should give us plenty of strength uh, to raise and lower this piece. So I've got things set up over here on my Carlton radio drill now. I got the cross beam bolted down to my table. I've got everything set up here. We're going to go ahead and start uh, drilling. Just start out by putting a little pointer in here. I've just center punched a couple of holes. Uh, I can move this whole top end around to get right in line with my holes and We'll drill them out, so let's do it. Got my pointer right there where I want it. I'm gonna take my pointer out and put my drill bit in. We're drilling for a 1024 um, hole, tap size. So this is a number 25 drill bit, which is the right one for that. And we got our speed. Oh, that drill bit's not in there good. better. All right. Just take her on down. We're uh, drilling at 1425 RPMs. It's a fairly small drill bit. The uh, radio drill will go up to 2,000 RPMs, but uh, I just decided to stick with the 1425. And I'm drilling fairly deep here. Those uh, screws we're putting in are about an inch and a half deep. I'll make sure I got plenty of clearance in the bottom of the holes. That should be plenty. So. Um, Let's move over to our next hole. Lock everything in place. And here we go. And now we come in here and I'll just tap these by hand. I've got a 1024 tap on there. Put a little bit of a anchor lube on it to help cut those threads. Particularly since we're going so deep and such a small tap, I really don't want to break a tap in here. That's about to depth. All right, and hole number two. Put some fresh uh, anchor lube on there. First one went real good. This cast iron cut's really nice.
and there we are bottomed out. And now we'll put our screws in. Getting a little bit tight in the bottom. I might need to run a bottoming tap down these uh, to get those threads down. So if you're not familiar, a typical taper tap, the bottom part of this is gonna be tapered, so it's not gonna be cut to full threads. A bottoming tap, on the other hand, cuts full threads all the way to the bottom. Uh, when you're use a, using a bottoming tap, you always start it with the, uh, taper tap and then finish it with the bottoming tap. So uh, we'll run these down and it won't even cut till we get down to the bottom. And it'll start getting tight. I can feel it getting a little bit tighter already. We're starting to get into that taper and we're cutting there. We'll take her all the way down. That's as deep as that tap goes, but I got to get another good five or six turns on it that I could feel it cutting. So let's run down to both of them. Now, let's uh, try running these screws down there again. All the way down. Nice and tight. And there's that one. And just check our fit here. Our block goes in there fine. There's really hardly any slop in there at all. Just what I want. Fits nice. There's a bolt that goes through this that screws in there. So you really you got a lot of your weight is on that screw, but we got the tab in there as well. I'm not worried at all about this thing. Uh, breaking now. I think between the braze job and having those pins going through there, uh, we're in good shape. So I think we're done. Well, there you go. Another successful repair. Uh, this piece now is ready to, probably next thing we're gonna be doing on there is getting the bottom in or the, the face on the other side scraped in. Gonna have to make sure that it's flat and parallel to these uh, back pieces. And then there's gonna be some other scraping on there. I think there's a dovetail on there and some other stuff that the front piece slides on. So we'll be uh, getting this thing ready to do some scraping on here very soon. And with that, uh, that's gonna be a wrap guys. Thanks as always for watching. Please uh, leave comments if you like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up are always appreciated and we'll catch you on the next video.